I've seen all the adults around me desperately waiting for retirement to come and save them. But I mean really, what's the point? To me, this is a fallacy. I knew I wanted a better life than that. I couldn't accept this kind of mediocrity. In this video, a millionaire is going to share with us six lessons about money that school did not teach us. If you don't know me, my name is Fred, and instead of going to university, following the traditional path, I decided to bet on myself and to start my own online business. And today, this is the sort of life that I've been able to build for myself. And let me tell you, none of this would have ever been possible if instead I had decided to go to university. So is school actually hiding things from you about money? What are those things that it didn't teach us? Let's find out. Hey teacher, how do I get rich? Get good grades. Uh-huh. And then am I rich? No. And then you go to a good college. Okay. And then I'm rich. No. Then you have to get a good job, work for 40 to 50 years, grinding out from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then I'm rich? And uh, no, but Jonathan, it's not always about the money. Everybody wants to be rich, let's face it. Everyone wants the Instagram lifestyle that influencers keep showing you all year round. However, in reality, that's the top 1%. And it's called the top 1% for a reason. Most of your teachers in school, they have no clue how money actually works. And the same applies to business school. The only reason I didn't go to business school is because they were teaching web marketing strategies that, quite frankly, worked in 2011, not in 2023. And why would I learn from somebody who doesn't even run a business or who never had a business. You know, when many people try to get started in business, they think they need to write down a business plan. And that might be the case depending on which business you want to start. However, if you want to start an online business, you don't need a business plan. You need a strategy, yes, but not a business plan. And the reason why is because in business, things move very fast. While you're waiting, you're overthinking, there's another hungry guy. He got started and now he's reaching out to potential customers. He's having meetings with them. He's closing the customers that could have been yours. If only you stopped overthinking, you rolled up your sleeves and you got to work. But if right now you're going to university or you have a job, if you think that this is the path to making a lot of money, to becoming rich, or even to getting to six figures a year, let me tell you there is a much more efficient way to go about doing things. Because that little skit was funny, but it is the truth. Most people, they just go to school, they get massively in debt to get an okay degree or a good degree, and some people, they don't even get a job. That's the reality. Because of artificial intelligence and machines automations, there's plenty of people losing their jobs every day. And trust me, we're only at the beginning of it. Because robots, machines, and AI is going to do so many jobs much better than we ever could. So lots of people are going to work hard to go to university to study super hard for five years to get a great degree and then at the end of it they're massively in debt like 200k, 300k and they can't even get a job. So they end up working at McDonald's. And even if you do get a job, you start off in life with minus $200,000. Does this sound like a fair deal to you? Now fair enough, I'll grant you that. Some CEOs, some COOs, CFOs or executives at big corporations, they make a pretty nice income. Some of them make seven figures a year. Lots of them make six figures a year. They drive the latest Audi or Benz to the office every day. And on the outside, people, they look at them and they think they have the amazing life. They say, oh, you're so lucky. In reality, those people, they work 80 to 90 hours a week, Monday to Friday, but on the weekends, they're always busy replying to work emails. They have no time for their friends, for their families. They often work on Saturdays. They're at the office before everybody and they leave after everybody. And even when they go on vacation, because hey, they have two weeks of vacations per year, they spend most of their time replying to work related email or text messages. So in the end, they might be at a beach in the Bahamas, but they're not really relaxing, are they? They're not really unwinding, taking a well-deserved break from work. And that's why ever since from a young age, I knew I didn't want to follow that path. I didn't want to go down that route because I saw most adults around me, they were miserable. They were depressed. They were anxious. They hated their lives. And so I looked at them. I observed them and I thought, what's the point? What's the point of working hard all of your life, studying hard for like five years even, and then you get a job, but you're in debt. And when you do get that job, you work slave-like hours just to pay taxes and to barely make any money to literally just enjoy life. And you do that for 50 years straight, nothing changes, you need to get a mortgage, you need to buy a car, but, but you need to take out a loan to buy the car as well. And then one day you die, boom. I've seen all the adults around me desperately waiting for retirement to come and save them. But I mean, really, what's the point? To me, this is a fallacy. I knew I wanted a better life than that. I couldn't accept this kind of mediocrity. I wanted to experience the best things in life. And if you're watching this channel, chances are you want the same. And you're damn right. You shouldn't have to settle for less than what you want. But I'll be honest with you, the path, it's not going to be easy. It's going to require a lot of hard work. To give you an example, on YouTube, you're often going to see at some point a creator blow up and it looks like an overnight success. And most people, they're just going to assume that they got lucky. But I mean, if you take a look at my channel right now, I'm publishing two videos a day on YouTube. It's a lot of work. It's growing the channel faster, of course, but it is a sacrifice that I'm making actively every day to reach my goals faster. I like to say that the shorter the time frame, the harder the intensity. And by that, what I mean is that, for instance, if you 
you wanted to lose 20 pounds in like a month as opposed to 26 months, obviously you would need to take more drastic action to achieve that goal faster. Now, sometimes faster is not always better, especially when it comes to weight loss or muscle gain. But when it comes to business, there are no limits. There is no law in the universe or in metaphysics or no biological laws that says that you cannot 10x your income or the number of leads that you get from one week to another or one month to another. And that's why I decided to do more. Because another thing that you will learn in business is that volume negates luck. If you only reach out to a few people a day, you might get a customer at some point. However, if you reached out to 100, 200, 300 people a day, chances are you'll sign much more customers than if you only reach out to three people a day. So you don't get lucky, essentially. You make your own luck. Huh. It's not always about the money. Then why are people at work always talking about how much money they're not making? Folks, I've worked for itty bitty startups. I've worked at Fortune 500 companies. I can confidently tell you here, it is about the money. And it's okay that it's about the money. In fact, let's do this. Comment down below. If you stop getting paid to do what you do, would you continue doing it? My guess is, Likely no. And that's totally fine. Truthfully, there's a lot of people that are going to try to shame you for wanting to experience a better life, for wanting to experience abundance or luxury. But ask them, why did you go to school? Why do you work your job? To get money, to literally live. So there's nothing wrong with making money or wanting to make more money. Honestly, people who are going to shame you for it, it's only because they don't have the necessary courage to do whatever they like text to reach their own goals. So instead of chasing their own goals, they're going to try to make you feel bad about going after what you want. So then why is all of our money education happening after we leave the education system? That I don't actually have an answer for. It's simple. It's because they don't want you to get rich. Governments, they simply want you to get a job and to pay taxes and then to die. They don't care about you. Companies don't care about you either. CEOs don't care about you either. They want to make money. And if they can take it from your pocket, they will. It's that simple. That's what I realized from a very early age. Why would I spend all of my life working for a system that really doesn't care about me and just wants to use me to get more money for themselves? You know, there's a lot of cringe quotes on Instagram, but one of them is very true. It says that if you don't build your own dreams, you'll be hired to build the dreams of somebody else. Now, does it mean it's always bad to be an employee? Not necessarily. However, in my opinion, if you want to experience true abundance, true freedom, even luxury, you need to be in control of as many variables as possible. And the only way you can actually do that is by being a business owner. To give you an example, in finance, there's this rule of paying yourself first. It's supposed to help you to accumulate more wealth and to become richer. So what's that rule essentially? It means to deduct as many things as possible from the income that can be taxed from your business. But hey, guess what? It doesn't apply to employees you're taxed already anyway. You cannot business expense anything. So as you can see, the game is rigged. The dice are loaded in favor of the top 1%, not of the bottom 99%. Lesson one, debt. When I say those four letters, you probably, ooh, shiver a little bit. Because debt is oftentimes vilified, rightfully, wrongfully. We'll get into that a little bit in the video. But the thing is, you need to realize debt is leverage. Knowing how to use debt is knowing how to use other people's money. He's right, honestly. If you use debt, like for instance, you take out a loan to invest in real estate, in starting your business, or in the stock market, experts consider this to be good debt because you're actually investing in an asset that will later down the line help you to significantly improve your finances to make you richer. However, I'll be completely honest with you. What I wanted above money was freedom. Like I said, you could be a CEO or an executive for a big corporation. You could make six figures a year, but you've got no freedom. You've got the money, but not the freedom because you work all of the time. You're exhausted all of the time. Your well-being is terrible. Your mental health, let's not even talk about it. So money does not always go hand in hand with freedom. However, if you don't have any money, obviously you'll have no freedom. You'll have to do what others want you to do. When you go to school, it's because you're forced to go. You don't have a choice. When you go to your job, it's because you have to. You need to pay bills. You need to pay stuff. You need to pay for food, for gas, for electricity. You don't have a choice. And freedom comes from the ability to make a conscious choice, to pick the option that you want. So if you don't have any money at all, you have no option to choose anything. You just have to do what others want you to do by default. And the less money you have, you'll have to do the worst things. Nobody wants to get up at 5 or at 4.30 to go and work at a factory for 10 to 12 hours. Nobody. Like, just go ask any of their employees if they would not rather be on the beach having some fun with their family. Of course they would take that option as opposed to being in the factory all day long. Now, when it comes to debt, personally, I could not sleep peacefully at night if I had any kind of debt whatsoever. Because think about it, even if you use debt to invest in an asset like real estate, you owe somebody money. And even though movies do not represent real life in any way, usually when somebody owes another person, person money, you know how it ends. Pretty bad. In the real world, it's kind of the same thing. If you owe somebody money, you're giving away a part of your freedom. And that's why, in my opinion, if you cannot buy something cash, you shouldn't buy it. And if you think, well, I'm screwed then. How do I get rich if I have nothing? How do I invest in real estate, in the stock market, in crypto? If you think like this, I'm sorry to say that you've got it all wrong. And the reason why, in my opinion, is because those things, real estate, the stock market, even maybe crypto or other sources of investments, they're not going to make you rich. At least for most people, it's never going to be the case. Most people, when they invest in real estate, 
market, in the stock market, in crypto, guess what happens? They lose everything. Now, fair enough. This happens because, quite frankly, most people have no clue what they're doing. They hear their plumber, their hairdresser, saying that they're going to invest in this crypto the next month. And so they do the same, but they don't bother to do any research at all on the topic. And so, of course, they experience a negative outcome. And then they wonder why. That's the worst part. But rich people use those things, real estate, the stock market, like I said, to turn their cash into assets that will gain value over time. Because with inflation year after year, the money that you have in your bank account, it is losing value. To give you an example, if you had a million dollars in your bank account with an inflation rate of 10% per year, you would lose $100,000 per year. So after 10 years, you would have $0 in your bank account and you started from a million dollars. And it's one thing to get rich, but it's another to stay rich and to keep getting richer. And that's why rich people invest in assets. And usually middle class people, they don't have any assets, but they have many liabilities. Like they have a car, they have the latest iPhone or some clothes that they don't really need. And they just buy things that take money out of their pocket instead of in investing into things that put money in their pocket. So if you can't use these things to get rich, then what do you do? You start your own business. And that is, in my opinion, the best way to become rich, starting from nothing, especially at a young age. The average millionaire is 57 years old and they have seven streams of income. And a lot of them, they made their wealth through real estate. However, let's face it, would it not be so much better to be a millionaire at 20 or at 30 than at 60? Obviously, the difference is night and day. And the only way you get to that level, in my opinion, is by starting your own online business. We'll come back to that in just a second. Also, he evoked the concept of leverage. Rich people understand leverage more than anyone else in this world, believe me. Let's say that you start your business today. You don't have much money, you have less than $2,000. Maybe you invest in some courses, in some knowledge, to have a step-by-step -step plan that you can execute on. But you cannot delegate, you cannot hire other people to do the work for you, so you have to do all of the work yourself. Honestly, this is exactly what most business people do at the beginning. We all have to go through that stage, that's just part of the game. But you're going to hit a ceiling pretty quickly, because you only have 24 hours in a day, and you cannot spend all of them working. Also, you only have so much energy in a day, and you only have so many resources that you can allocate to your business. And that is why rich people use leverage. And how do they do this? Either by hiring other people, so they leverage other people's time and skills, or by leveraging other people's capital, like for instance, when you take out a loan, yes, technically speaking, you can use that money as a form of leverage. But for instance, the money that you make with your business, it can be used as capital, as leverage to start another business, or to invest in real estate, or in the stock market. And then the other form of leverage is automations, machines, systems and processes, and artificial intelligence, of course. And that's why when you are an employee, you have a 9 to 5 job, for instance, you don't have that much leverage. You're very limited when it comes to that. And that is why you're not going to see exponential growth in how much money you make year after year. Now, it might be a different story if you work in a commission-based job, like maybe you're a sales rep, because you still have some sort of leverage. You can close more deals, reach out to more people, so you can make more money. But like I said, at some point, you're going to hit a ceiling anyway. You can't do it all by yourself. Lesson four index funds. If you want to ask me and say, John, I want to invest. I just don't want to do a lot of things. This real estate thing is might be too much. Like, what should I do? Low cost, broad based market index funds. That's it. I've got a story for you. So back in high school, during a semester in economics, we had this simulation in which everyone in the class got like $100,000. And basically the challenge was, here's $100,000, go invest. And there was a simulation program that we used. And you know, everyone's all jazzed up like, oh, I've got the optimal strategy. This is what I'm going to invest in. I'm going to read the financials here. And I'm going to read these charts. And the thing is, though, that's probably the worst way to teach students how to invest in the stock market. Because the person who did the best was someone who took an outsized position in some random company that had a great quarter. That's it. But if you think about it, over an investment time horizon, it's not in three month increments or six month increments. It is 40, 50, 60 years. It's true that most people are going to focus on the short term results. When in reality, if you want to make a lot of money, you need to start thinking long term. Now, of course, you need to have your big long term goal and break it down into monthly, weekly, and even daily objectives. Because at the end of the day, it's the daily process, the daily routine that is going to help you to get to that end result at some point. But like I said, investing in the stock market, if you only have a thousand dollars to invest, it's not going to change your life. Sure, it might put you in the habit of investing in the stock market on a monthly basis, for instance, but it is not going to significantly change the quality of your life literally overnight. Truthfully, if you want to see good returns on your investments in the stock market or even in real estate, you'll need a lot of capital to invest into it, at least a million dollars. So if you only have a thousand dollars to invest, start your own online business. Invest in knowledge because you don't know what you don't know. If you knew all of the mistakes that people make when they get started on a business, for instance, you could avoid those mistakes and reach your desired outcome 10 times faster. I can tell you for a fact, if I hadn't taken so many courses and read so many books on money and on personal finances, watched countless YouTube videos, 
I would not know all of the things that I know today and I would definitely not be where I am today. Now you've got to be very careful because not every business model offers the same opportunities. A lot of people are going to say that dropshipping is an amazing business model. However, in reality, when you analyze it in depth, you realize it is possibly one of the worst online business models to start as a beginner. And trust me, I did dropshipping in the past, so I know what I'm talking about. Now I can't go too in depth in this video because otherwise it would take three hours. So if you want to start your own online business, but you don't know what to do, you have no clue where to start. I have recorded a free video in which I am going to analyze every popular online business model, affiliate marketing, dropshipping, info products, consulting, and much more. We take a look at the pros and at the cons of each business model. And I'm also going to share with you for completely free the three step process that you can use to start lending your first customers right away. The link is in the description below if you're interested. And with that said, as always, I am waiting for you on the other side.